Yeah, I had a student email me actually in, just the other day and she said, um, oh, that one lesson you were teaching in that course made me so angry <laughs> that I really just didn't <laughs> want to do anything that you said there. And I'm like, that too, you know, guess what? <laughs> that <That's valuable. laughs> particular lesson is going to be the most valuable thing you get out of this course. There's so many life lessons in, in watercolor, I think. Um, yes. So yeah, it's really exciting to, to be able to talk about that and, and see how it applies when you learn something in art, how you can actually apply it to life. So yes. yeah. now yeah. I feel like we've kicked off the interview already. Um, so <laughs> I'm actually going to just pause here so I can introduce you. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's just, I, I, this is how it goes. Artists get together and we just want to just get right to the meaty stuff, uh, the, the business of creation and, and uh, artist mindset. Um, so I'm here today. I'm Angela Fair. Uh, you know me and uh, you know how, how, how much I believe in being a fearless artist, creating art that comes straight from your heart with passion and purpose and vulnerability and authenticity. And I get to talk to a kindred spirit today, uh, Nancy Hillis. And Nancy is an artist. She's a psychiatrist. She's written a book, um, this amazing book, The Artist's Journey, uh, which just came out uh, in 2018 or early 2019, you said. And um, this book inspired me so much. Uh, I thought, you know, if I could write a book, this is the book I would write, only she's doing it much better because you, uh, you have some expertise, some experience, uh, and in the whole field of psychiatry, which I think uh, is going to be fun to talk about. And uh, I'm just really excited by this book. I've been quoting you, my students already know I've been quoting you, um, they're probably tired of it already, uh, hearing, <laughs> hearing all my little quotes from, from the book, talking about the adjacent possible, um, and stepping into the unknowing. Uh, it's just uh, really, I'm just so honored that you agreed to talk to me today and uh, share some thoughts on artist mindset with uh, my audience. Uh, we're primarily watercolor artists, um, painting watercolor and wanting something more from our art. Most of my students, um, I, t I love to teach um, technique, how to, how to have a base of sound technique so that you can then be creative with it. And so often we find ourselves in this place of transition. Um, and, I, and you talk about transition in your book, about making an inner shift. Um, so before we talk about the book, I would, I'd love to hear a little bit about you and your journey. Um, you are, as I said, you're an artist and psychiatrist. Um, which came first? Yes. yes. <laughs> well, I, I think I've been a psychiatrist in some ways, I say all my life. <laughs> there are many stories around that. But it, it, interestingly enough, when I was in seventh grade, I told my mother that I was going to be a psychiatrist. And then I promptly forgot and kind of went and, you know, did different things and drama and in chemistry and theater and all kinds of things I was exploring. And then I did end up going to medical school. And I actually started out in internal medicine and then radiology reading okay. x-rays very visual right. you know and then eventually i realized that i was more you know it, it came back to me that i really was a psychiatrist or that was my field and i told my mother i'm switching to psychiatry and she goes oh nancy don't you remember and i said remember what she goes when you told me you were going to be a psychiatrist when you were 13. <laughs> that's amazing so, yeah. yeah so it kind of came back yeah you know 15 years later so well, it's really interesting I, I'm, I'm not, I've never been interested in anything in the medical field that's so not, I mean, I've always gone straight to art. So I'm curious about psychiatry, like what drives, what motivates a psychiatrist? Is it just trying to understand the, my, why people do what they do, um, why they think the way they think? Yeah. So, you know, what's interesting is, let me just say that when I moved from radiology to psychiatry, this wonderful neurosurgeon at the Brigham Hospital in Boston said, Nancy, you're going from shadows to nuances. Okay. So it's like, it's the nuances. It's the mystery. Mm -hmm. I, I believe um, psychiatry is re really about stepping into the unknown. Okay. And it's about doing that with another person and going on this journey together and kind of being a mirror for them so that they can look at themselves and their relationships and kind of get at what's most meaningful to them. At least that's the kind of psychiatry I do, which is existential psychotherapy. Okay. So it's really looking at the exigencies of life and what we grapple with and, and, and really deciding what's important and what's meaningful and kind of bringing yourself alive in your life. Mm. So it's, to me, it's very connected to what we're doing as artists. 
Well, you know? yeah, it's so much rooted in your deepest core beliefs. And some, and those are often so masked and layered under all our coping mechanisms and the way we think that we think about stuff. Um, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So it's really wonderful. And it's very, it was the most, for me, creative field of medicine. Okay. Because it really is about the, the mystery, you know, sometimes the inarticulable, all of those things. It's sitting there with the person in their humanity. And I love that. Mm, yeah. And so from there, literally the day I got out of all my training, seven years after medical school, I said, I want to study sculpture. And I looked and I couldn't, you know, how do you find a sculpture teacher, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I called the local art um, center in Palo Alto, California, where I was at the time, and found this wonderful teacher, Adrienne Duncan. And so she started teaching me in her home. And this, this story is so powerful. So she said, you know, I said, Adrienne, I don't know what I'm doing. And she says, great. And I said, oh, wow. I thought to myself, I found my teacher. She mm -hmm. said, just get a 50-pound bag of clay and come to my house, and, and we'll start. <laughs> that's, yeah. So, wow. That sounds, that sounds really fun. I want to get my hands yeah. dirty, too. I know. <laughs> and then from there, it went to – Adrian happened to also paint in watercolor and also okay. do collage. And so at one, after a while of working with, with sculpture, I asked her, will you teach me watercolor? And she said, sure. So that began this whole journey of painting, of exploring watercolor for a number of years, which is so magical. And you, you, know, going, also you were not always an abstract artist. Is, right. Yeah. So it was more, you know, originally it was more kind of figurative, maybe symbolic figurative, kind of abstracted, always, you know, very painterly, mm -hmm. but, but not kind of necessarily non-objective or abstract expressionist originally. Yeah. So it, it kind of is, you know, you know, as an artist, we're, con I think we're continually evolving. Mm -hmm. And so that continued to evolve over time as artists, we're continually facing the unknown mm -hmm. and, continually evolving in our lives and in our art. And I think our, our art mirrors that. Yeah. I, I think in art, like I know one thing I realized was here I am, I've been painting for 20 years in watercolor. So I, I know what I'm doing technically, but every painting I start, I still start with the feeling of, I don't know how to do this. Yes. <laughs> when I realized that, then it was like, Oh, I need to tell my students this because they're beginners feeling like I don't know how to do this. And they think that feeling is going to go away. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, we just, yeah. like, you know, we just get more comfortable with living. Uh, I think so. Yeah. In fact, I really, that makes me laugh because I have that same experience and it's, and it's like what I say now is that, and that's exactly where we want to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, and in fact, you know, you saying coming to your sculptor uh, instructor and saying, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, as though that's the reason we should just walk away or we need to feel like, um, like somebody has to give us permission. I think we're always waiting for that permission. Oh, it's, you know, to, for somebody to say, oh, it's okay that you don't know what you're doing. In fact, that's a good thing. Um, yes. Wow, how empowering. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then I think that, yeah, in terms of that, sense of looking for permission outside of ourselves, eventually we learn that really we need to give ourselves permission mm -hmm. and that yes. sense of allowing, right? Allowing yeah. the risk taking, allowing the ugly painting, mm -hmm. allowing the experimentation, allowing to not know what's going to happen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and that's a scary, that's a really scary thing thinking, yeah. you know, I don't know what's going to happen. And I think often we think it's going to be bad. You know, yes. <laughs> I don't yes. know what's going to happen. I'm clearly going to ruin this blank piece of paper. <laughs> uh, so, you know, why am I even starting? And that's often, I think what keeps us on the couch, you know, when we, yeah. when we actually yes. plan to paint that evening and yeah, but there's just that fear. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And I think part of that, too, is just um, kind of developing the ability to tolerate and even embrace those paintings that kind of don't work for us. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that because you talk about the ugly painting. I believe that those ugly paintings are part, they're so much a part of this process of experimentation. 
And if we can really allow them, it's an incredible thing because even the ones that we say, oh, that's so awful. It's awful what I did. I, I can't look at it. Mm -hmm. That particular piece may be the embryonic form of something new emerging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know? Yeah, I, I loved when you said that. I'm like, wow, you know, that's that gives you permission to 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 push into that place. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To feel shame or judged by it. Yeah, and it might be that that, that it may be the nidus, the seed of of a whole series that comes out of that ugly piece. And you know how as we work in a series, we're continually going deeper and evolving the work and 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 playing off little variations and things. Mm -hmm. And that might be the nidus of it. That might be the seed. Okay. Like yeah. That rejected yeah. painting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend who's hatching butterflies right now and she got the the little larva home and she can't she couldn't handle the larva. They just creeped her out so much. And she just was waiting for the day that they would make that chrysalis and she didn't have to look at the larva anymore. And I thought that was so isn't that the truth? We just Isn't that Yeah, we don't want to look at that analogy. Just, yeah. Just to go straight to pretty. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But all the phases in there. Yeah. You know, yeah, you can't crack that chrysalis open until it's, you know, ready, right? We kill it. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. And a lot of times, too, I think that when it seems like you're in that ugly phase or that, you know, that chrysalis or whatever, and nothing seems to be happening, mm -hmm. and yet under the surface, there's a lot happening. Yeah. And that's part of the cycle of creation. Mm -hmm. It's not all the butterfly. It's sometimes it's the raw immediate work and it's the, um, the beginnings and something in there is trying to be expressed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what, even the times when you feel like you're just repeating yourself, um, mm -hmm. because I have my students working in series as well, work from the same image. Uh, let's see how, yeah. how, you know, how far we can get when we really get to know this. And, um, you know, so we're doing more representational stuff, but trying to get to the core of our emotion about that piece. And yeah. so, yeah, it's, and, and I found for myself, like I have a painting I've done, I think 20 times and those first eight, almost all of them look almost identical. You know, yeah. there was like that I needed to get to a place of being really frustrated and bored in order to break through to the next thing. And you know, yes. that's powerful. So then you have yeah. to live with that kind of boredom for a while. And uh, right. yeah, feeling like you have nothing to say. Yes. I've seen yeah. so many artists do what you were just saying right there, where you got bored, you, you found yourself, it was kind of repetitive in a certain way, mm -hmm. and you got really frustrated. And it's that moment when, that, that can be that moment of breakthrough, mm -hmm. where you just like have nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and then some you know and then you make a move right? yeah well and if you've done watercolor you know that there's only a certain amount of correcting we can do on a single piece of paper um so yes. i like to say watercolorists work in layers it's just you're doing it on different pieces of paper instead of you know building up paint on the canvas um yes. so so if you have a piece where you've where you've messed up and you don't think it's redeemable, suddenly you, again, you have nothing to lose. And some of the best paintings come out of that feeling like, well, I might as well take that big risk because yeah, I've got nothing to risk here really because this piece yeah. is ruined. Yeah. Um, yes. It's amazing to see the authenticity that comes out of that. But I think, and maybe that's letting go of whatever that internal fear need for validation yeah. Um, yes. Clinging to success, um, yes. a, a good outcome. Yeah. And, you know, and self doubt and, and the inner critic and all that that's holding on to, to something and trying to recreate that previous experience. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. That's the challenging thing. One of them is that we're continually having to then move off of that and step into the unknown again. Yeah. <laughs> I believe this is another thing that I think is really powerful is this, that the creative impulse can be very subtle sometimes and we can easily miss it mm -hmm. or dismiss it. Right. If we get too caught up in staying in these patterns of, Oh, this worked before. So let's do that again. Yeah. But we, but we're not as staying awake to whatever's trying to come through. And so we got to really stay open 
present and tuned into those little nudges yeah. that come in. It might be in the form of a dream or you're walking out in nature and something excites you and, oh, wow, look at that continuous line or something like that, you yeah. know, or that shape or whatever. And something wants to be expressed is to really notice that. Yeah. And to allow yourself to go in, maybe go into your art journal and experiment in there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's, you know, kind of what we want to cultivate is that attitude of experimentation. It's like go into the thing that scares you, right? Yeah. And if the yeah. fear is I'm going to ruin it. Yep. One more move and I'm going to ruin it. Yeah. Well, maybe you've got to ruin it, you know, so yeah. to speak. Well, and you, and you have, to, you have right? things to say to encourage artists in that, that, that yep. one painting that was so meaningful and so skilled for you, it's not the only thing you'll ever do that was good, right? right? That's right. Yeah. And it, yeah. And it and lives it inside of you. You know, it lives yeah. inside of you. And yeah. And it will express itself, mm -hmm. you know, iteratively because it's in you. Mm -hmm. It'll be a little bit slightly different form perhaps, you yeah. know. But better, but better. Yeah. I think. I think it, yeah. And I, and I remember that feeling as a new artist um, in those early years, going, "Oh, this is the best thing I've ever done." And then immediately yeah. going into a transition stage where I'm learning new things and everything's failing, and thinking, "Well, that's yes. the last thing I've ever done, too." Yes. So yeah, well, that's an interesting thing because I remember early on, you know, having one of those days. Maybe I was painting landscapes, and and it just worked really well that day. And then I remember being afraid after that to go back because yeah. what if I can't do it as well this time, Yeah, you know? So it's almost like, um, almost like a success fear, Yeah, you know, that can come yeah. up. Well, you know and, I mean? think it, I'm, and it is a part of the, the technical side because the things we do accidentally, we then have to learn how to do intentionally. So I, mm -hmm. I understand that when it comes to working technically, but yeah, to say, you know what, the beauty that came out of that painting, that's still inside you, that gets to come out, you know, that's you right. have to learn how to release it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's an yeah. exciting thing to share. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. 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 And I think working in the series really helps all of this. It helps us to say, Hey, you know, it's not precious. Look, I can do, 20 you know variations on this theme or whatever it's okay and I can let I can go further on this one and quote unquote ruin it and I yeah. can hold yeah. back on this one or I can go really raw on this one yeah. you know and have this range of expression yeah looking at something you know well, and, and your work becomes less precious when you have yeah. a lot of it right so that's right. a thousand <laughs> paintings uh you know in your past and your body of work it's like well you know ruining one out of a thousand no big deal so if you're so invested in a single painting that yeah. you know that then they become really precious um and yeah yes 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 yeah and I think it's hard, you know, for people who are not, you know, maybe they're working full time. They don't have a lot of time to paint. And so when they do go into paint, there's so much pressure. Yes. Yeah. On them. They put so much yeah. pressure on themselves. I've got to make this work, you know, mm -hmm. and that's where I encourage people to, even if you're working a lot and you feel like you've got very little time, you know, try to work with your art journal a lot, you know, kind of, Tell yourself this is experimentation. Yeah. This is exploratory. Yeah. You know, those yeah. kinds of words, what we say to ourselves really matters. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I like to say this is just a sketch and everything is just a sketch until it actually gets framed. You know, I love it. Letting go, or, or even just setting aside time. And again, like you said, it's hard when you don't have a lot of time, but to say, I'm going to spend five minutes doing a warm up or experimenting, or I'm going yeah. to plan to deliberately overwork some paintings for a while or, you know, push to that place of, um, and, and just allowing yourself that space to, to fail, uh, yes. in the name of learning in the name of growth right. and right. recognizing that that's how it has to happen. Yeah. Through that. And you know, thing, yeah. The painting that you see as failed today, you might actually love a month from now or a year from now. Yeah. Um, let's talk about there being a paradox between powerlessness and transformation, which I thought was really, um, mm. yeah, interesting and um, exciting, mm -hmm. you know, that, the, yeah. that you create deeper work when you're leaning into that powerlessness. Yeah. And that's that allowing. It's just moving off of, of 
needing con- to control it all, mm-hmm. you know, and just kind of opening opening up. That sounds like a life lesson. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I have three teenagers at home. One. I'm trying to learn that I cannot control much in my house. So, yeah. <laughs> That's an ongoing one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that, that being in that situation where things are tough, things are unsettled, um, you're not in control. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it does kind of challenge us to confront some of those fears that maybe we've been living with for a long, long time. It's very healing, I think, to, you know, any form of creativity. Uh, you, you learn so much about yourself. Yes. Ongoing, in an ongoing way. Yeah. So how can we ever say a painting is a failure when we're continuing to do that looking inward, that creative therapy? Um, and I think creative therapy is almost a catchword, like, oh, it's healthy for you. It's like exercise. But if you really look at what does that mean? Yeah. Um, you know, we can see that it impacts us powerfully. We spend, Mm -hmm. and I say this all the time, we spend so much time on self-care when it comes to what we eat and getting enough sleep and, you know, our physical bodies. When do we take care of the the inward, the inner person? Um, And I love that, you know, you're really digging into that in the artist's journey. Yes, thank you. Yes, that's what my life is about. (laughs) It's really about helping people to believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, And you say that, you say, trust yourself. And uh, again, that's another thing that is kind of a thing we say. Um, So how do you dig in and and actually get to that place where you, where you know what that means in your life? Um, Do you have suggestions for artists and, and keys that help make it easier to do that? Well, I think that's, it's an ongoing process. It's uh, I think first of all is just awareness awareness that it's important to begin to trust yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, just even having that concept. Yeah. And that, that confers a kind of sense of grace that that kind of says it's okay. If I have a hard day, it's okay. If I go in the studio and I don't know what to do, Mm -hmm. it's okay. If I create, you know, an ugly painting, Mm -hmm. And, and it informs the allowing and it informs the ability to tolerate the challenges of creating, which are, you know, fears, yeah. perils of facing ourselves, all the fears of what if it's not good enough, what will other people think, fears of humiliation. Um, and, you know, actually the biggest one of all, I think, is our own self-criticism and self-doubt. Yeah. More inner than outer, but you know, the inner is worried about the outer being critical as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we can begin to see that it is so important to begin to trust yourself and this is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. It's it's not like it's a hundred percent (laughs) done, but it's a continual, when we get to that hard edge, when we get to that ledge, you know, it's to remember, Oh yeah, it's okay. It's okay. And and to not uh, kind of be so hard on yourself. Yeah. And I, I believe that, you know, just living our lives and dealing with what we deal with in life, as well as in our art, it's continually inviting us to trust ourselves mm-hmm. and to believe in ourselves. Mm-hmm. And it helps if we have other people who support us in that. Right. Who, who encourage us, who guide us you know, to come back to that Mm self-compassion. There's some great work by poets like David White and John O'Donohue around the poetry of self-compassion, Mary Mm -hmm. Oliver. Mary Oliver, you quoted her in your book, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so much of her work was deep self-compassion, dealing with, uh, you know, years of of struggle. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of continually remembering and reminding ourselves of that. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's this, this intentional training that you have to do to just kind of go keep, keep coming back to that. Um, yeah. We're really good. Like I'm, I'm pretty decent at doing it to my kids. They're teenagers. Yeah. They're pretty self-condemning. So yeah, why wouldn't <laughs> I want to do that for myself as well? And that's the challenge is we, you know, we're our harshest, you know, critics. Mm-hmm. And so it's continually finding and refinding that self-compassion. Mm-hmm. 
it's that hard. It's really an ongoing challenge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it informs how we grow as artists because it, it, it affects whether we even go out and spend that creative time. Yeah. yeah. It's valuing yourself enough to say, yes, I, I want to do this. I yearn to do this and I'm going to do this. I'm going to say yes to this desire I have to create, whether anyone likes it or not. To be able to say, I hear your criticism. I understand where you're coming from. And yet I get to reject that and continue to paint. Um, yeah. You haven't taken the brush out of my hand. Yeah. Yeah. That just gave me goosebumps listening uh, to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I think it's so powerful when you're creating work that is authentic and true to who you are, because it's, it is something that uh, endures. As I'm reading your book, the things that ring true, it's like, yeah, this is someone I can talk to. This is someone who understands. Um, and when we have an end with art, we have the same thing. Yes, we do. Yeah. We do. And so it's so important to, you know, to hold on to yourself as an artist to you know really stay in touch with yourself mm -hmm. allow those creative impulses those subtle ones to come through it may seem like the wildest idea but you know bring it in and you know <laughs> laugh welcome it yeah and i always do this kind of deathbed experiment in the end what's going to matter mm -hmm. you know did you bite into it yeah. did you take those risks with your art did you, you know, did you get out what was inside of you mm -hmm. or were you, it all, yeah, throw it all out there, lay it all on the throw it out there. Or were you afraid and were you tiptoeing around and being, yeah. you know, being gummed to death, so to speak? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love, you actually had a line um, about licking the paint and that just made me laugh. I just don't lick the paint. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, one of my teachers, Jim Smith. He was, he he was just incredible, representational, beautiful, old masters type of paintings. And he would say, don't lick the paint. And I would laugh uproariously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't you know? poke it to death either. You yeah. know, just get in yeah. and stab it. If you're going to stab it, stab it, right? So. Yeah, go in, put it in and leave it alone. You know, yeah. <laughs> lay it down and leave it alone. Yeah. Um, was it Birgit O'Connor? I was talking to her. She said, kill it or cure it, right? So that, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. You talked. No. Oh, there's. I, there's so much. Um, <laughs> uh, you, oh, you said just a moment ago. Paintings are a mirror. Uh, I often will tell students, I can see your indecision. I can see that you got a little lost in this area. Um, yeah. It's so amazing how honest. And and I've I've always thought it was maybe just a quality of watercolor being transparent. Um, it reveals yeah. a lot. Um, but I love that idea that art is art is honest. It shows. It shows yeah. who you are, even when you don't think that it is. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and it really does reflect it back. And yeah. if you're if you're feeling very very anxious, it will show that. Yeah. If you're feeling unsure, it will reflect that back. And then so then we try to well, let's just be, then you know, do you want to be decisive? Then go in and make a move and get out, and it's okay. Yeah, we do a lot of starts, you know, in in this experimentation. All right. And watercolor, I think, is the first, the first layer is always very exciting. And then yes. it's the, the middle stage where the indecision catches up with you. And it's like, okay, now I don't know what to do with this. And it's so beautiful. Yes. And how can I, now I have to worry about ruining this beautiful beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. you mentioned something about uh, the, the starting or continuing in the same spirit in which you yes. started. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what, we, I mean, this, these are subtle things, you know, but we try to go back in with that similar energy yeah. and there's a dialogue between the spontaneous and the considered between yeah. we do a lot of stream of consciousness you know mark making automatism automatic drawing yeah. that type of thing you know and then we go in further and there's that flux that editing so to speak mm -hmm. and there's that's when you know some considered comes in some some thinking but we want to really be in that dance between Again, the spontaneous and the considered, we want to stay as intuitive as we can. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a lot of how we work in this yeah, yeah. freshness way. Yeah. Now, for me, as a, as a watercolor instructor, a lot of my students are painting representational subjects. So we want mm -hmm. to paint our representational subjects. We want to take a landscape and we want to, um, we want to abstract it just enough to show yeah. who we are, to show our emotions about it. 
yeah. that still have some, you know, um, actual representation of things in the yeah. painting. And so there's this challenge there too of that balance between I got to make it look like a, a tree and yet I also got to make it look like me. And how do we find there's a tension there? There, yeah, I, uh, yes, <laughs> very much so, very challenging, because I've been in there too, yeah. I was doing the figures and horses yeah. and landscapes yeah. previously, yes. so I know, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I mean, one way we, we kind of try to, to address that is just, yeah, be willing to make a bunch of versions and explore yeah. all the possibilities um, and follow that stream of consciousness um, yes. That, yeah. That, because at least then your confidence is going to come through. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It really does. And that confidence. And, and I, uh, aren't we much more able to show who we are when we have confidence? Yeah. And then you kind of get into flow in that flow state and you get in and some of them will surprise you. Yes. So that's part of that series or those starts. Mm -hmm. Something surprising could come through because you start to get in it and you start to a little bit get out of the thinker yeah. mode and the critic mode, you know? Yeah. So that's what we're trying to access. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's this, um, you talked about the strategic mind versus the intuition and, and who are, who's ruling the painting really. Right? <laughs> Exactly. We need strategies, but we also, we have to make room for that intuition to kind of lead, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a very interesting tension and dance mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, it is a dance. Yeah, that's yeah. a good way to... That is a good way to uh, look at it for sure. That, that yeah. Forth. Yeah. Oh, to create deeply is to enter into and allow the emergence of the unknowable. And... Um, I think there's a little fear sometimes that when we dig deep into who we are as artists, we're going to like, there's going to be a bunch of cobwebs and nothing else. Um, <laughs> I, so I love being able to encourage artists that that's just not the case. Um, yeah. You get to find really wonderful things when you get, you know, down to the heart of who you are. Yes. Um, into yes. that unknowing place. And yes. To find that deeper, that deeper self. Yes. Yes. And a big part, again, is allowing the pieces that where we go, hmm, this is not me or this looks unfamiliar or, you know, the ones we might want to reject. It's actually saying, no, this is really great, too, mm -hmm. as well as these ones that I love. Yeah. It's all of it. It's kind of very Jungian concept of kind of the shadow. Yeah. You know? And then there was this famous psychiatrist, Harry Stack Sullivan. He talked about the good me, the bad me, and the not me. Right. <laughs> yeah, so we're this, okay with the good and the bad, maybe, but the not me is like, yeah, we don't want to, any associate. We're not that at all, right? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So it's kind of trying to allow, um, really, really allowing the thing that you're most afraid of. Mm, yeah. You know, which is, oh, I'm, I'm, the ruined painting, the ugly painting, the mediocre painting. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah. As well as all the other stuff that you love. Yeah, yeah I think that that's where these interesting intersections happen, overlaps, intersections, the tension between the ugly and the pretty, you know, the the things that surprise us. Yeah. And sometimes because you allowed that and you allowed it to live and you live with that painting for a while, then you saw, oh, actually there's something kind yeah. of interesting in here. Yeah. In yeah. something that at first I was kind of rejecting mm -hmm. and, and we, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. There's paintings that we love and that, that just inspire us from the first moment. And then maybe a little later we're like, Oh, it's kind of bland actually. Um, mm -hmm. I've had that happen. And then mm -hmm. there's pieces that um, you're not really sure what to do with, but maybe I'm not, I don't know if this is good or not. And then, Oh, well, you know, then you start to get to know it and you become familiar yeah. with, with what redeems it and what makes it special. And then, yeah, those ugly ones that, uh, yeah, yeah, just might have something after all and, and might be just indicating a new direction that you're just not ready to understand yet. The new, the unfamiliar, at first we may reject because yeah. it's just yeah. other, it's yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's really, that's really neat. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I had a student email me actually and just the other day and she said, um, oh, that one lesson you were teaching in that course made me so angry. 
But I really just didn't want to do anything that you said there. And I'm like, that too, you know, guess what? <laughs> that <That's valuable. laughs> particular lesson is going to be the most valuable thing you get out of this course. Just, you got to be patient with it, but there's going to be some, there's something there that, you know, was just getting her, getting her hackles up and yeah. That's right. It's the there's some energy thing. there, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Interesting. I've noticed that too, where sometimes that's kind of like the refusal in on the journey yeah. you know, where there we're going along and something new arises and, and oftentimes we may refuse it right? because it's unfamiliar yeah. and yet it might be the very thing we might need to go into. Mm -hmm. I, I remember for me, I used to kind of refuse um, the grid concept okay. or, uh, const you know, constraint in terms yeah. of color palette constraints. Oh, yeah. But eventually I realized, whoa, the power and constraint yes. is yeah. it's infinite. Oh yeah, I'm exactly the same way. And I like I like being able to encourage students that yeah, you can do the thing that interests you and you can set aside from the stuff that you're just you know, whatever yeah. it is that's uncomfortable. But yeah. at the same time, always staying open. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. being willing to be surprised by yeah. Yeah. That's right. Always stay open. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's a tension there. Like, there is. Uh, know yeah. that you have what you need and you can learn what you need to know, but also yeah. recognize that adopting that, the stuff that's uncomfortable and unfamiliar is going to lead to growth as well. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I love what you're saying about kind of, of redeeming a painting and really isn't that reflective of life you know, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we have to redeem things, and yeah. and and then there are those paintings. I love this. It's a German concept. It's called Durch Komponiert, and it means through composed. Okay. And there are some things that are just kind of Durch Komponiert from the get go. So some paintings. Have you had this experience where some paintings are just all there at every phase? Oh yeah. And you yeah. could stop anywhere. Yeah. You could stop in the underpainting or the dark light pattern no no ten, yeah. or you could continue on and at any point you could stop mm. and those are those magical paintings yeah. oh yeah <laughs> do they just kind of paint themselves or <laughs> it's all supposed to be like this every time <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah and then there are those other paintings just the opposite where you're like you know you're like um beowulf you know, grappling down grendel the yeah. monster grendel yeah. and you're fighting that thing to the to the death and only at the very end do you pull it out and yeah. redeem it. <laughs> yeah. The Germans probably have a word for that too. They probably um, yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's just this nonstop battle. Absolutely. And yeah. so you just don't know. And so that's a great reason to just paint no matter what you're, how you feel, right? Yeah. Creativity. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's great, really. It's a relationship that's continually changing, right? And growing. And yeah. And yes, it's, it's, it's so rewarding as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so that, that gets at the adjacent possible when you said it's continually growing. And I thought about that concept from, it's basically from evolutionary biology. Okay. And Stuart Kaufman and then Bruce Sawhill and Jim Harriet yeah. kind of elaborated this, but it's basically this idea that you, you take a step and that step opens up possibilities. And, yeah. That, right. Yeah. Yeah opens up unforeseen possibilities yeah, yeah. that only happen by taking the step. <laughs> and in a painting, we're the hero. We get to, yes. we get to decide which, yes. which of those infinite possibilities we're going to follow. And I guess yes. that's where experience gives us the ability to, you know, chase more of those or to have more strategies. Yeah. Um, to see those possibilities more broadly and yeah. be intentional about which ones we're going to follow. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah and it and just, should always be safe right that's that ch changing the world doesn't happen when we're safe <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes deep experimentation yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Mm. continually yeah. oh and it's yeah and and knowing that well and, and sometimes it's okay to find that safe place and just breathe again yeah and, you know, yeah yeah and uh Yes. See that where where you've come from in all that risk taking and all that mistake making, um, when then you go to your safe place, it's like, oh, my safe place is now better and richer because I'm bringing with it these new things that I learned in the 
in the battle. Yeah. Yes. Informed by, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's so great. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of addictive to teach on it, isn't it? Yes, it yeah. is. <laughs> now you're just opening up your course, the creative or the artist journey. Is that right? Um, it's because you it's have an online open. course as well. Yeah. And that's just periodically a few times so a the, year. Or how do you run that? Okay. So the artist journey, three secrets of the masters is open. Continue okay. right oh, now. Good. That's good to yeah. know. Okay. And we have people come in yeah. every day. Okay, good. <laughs> We've got an incredible group in there and it's yeah. just wonderful. Yeah. And then the master class is something that I give at different times. I just finished up the master class, which was it's a twelve art module, very intensive okay. course where I give a weekly live session for eight weeks straight. Okay. I go through it with them. I'm taking the course as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. And then I, and then I, I notice what I notice during the week as I'm going through the module. And then I have that live talk where I'm just like, here's some ahas. I've had some revelations. And then, yeah. you know, cause it, as you paint, you realize, Oh, this is something that another person might get some value out of that. Yeah. Maybe they don't know mm -hmm. things that I took. It takes years to learn. Yes. Yeah. And kind of share that. So that was incredibly fun. Mm -hmm. and we just finished that up. And that'll come back around probably in the summer or the fall. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. And yeah. Um, yeah, and I've got the book and I've got yeah, the audio book just came out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Audio book. Did you, do you do in-person classes as well? Do you travel and teach a bit? Yes. So I am going to have a live in-person workshop in October, October 20th through 25th. I'll be announcing that soon. Yeah. And it'll be here in Northern California. I'm in Santa Cruz. Okay. So if people want to find out more about your classes, uh, workshops, uh, they can look you up online. You're nancyhillis.com. Am I correct? That's correct. Yeah, we'll make sure we link that up in the show notes uh, as well. And your book, uh, I can't say enough great things about it. It's been so inspiring to me. Um, just little light bulb moments, just helping me to be more, much more fearless in my own artistic practice. Uh, and I think it has application for every level of the artistic uh, journey because, you know, we're always wanting to be more intentional about uh, what we're learning and how we learn it. Yeah, you talk about creation being a connection between the immortal and divine. And I just thought that's our connection to something that, yeah, is profoundly, yeah, um, yeah godlike, really. Yes. Um, yes. To be able to vision and create worlds on our paper. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. make tangible, intangible things, you know. It's, yes. It's well, it, it gets, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it gets at the mystery and the the inarticulable and you know all of that the ineffable it's yeah. it's yeah, this there's um I, I can't remember if it was in your book uh i the there's a veil between the invisible and the yes. visible world yes. right and we it get to kind of poke some holes in it yeah uh, let a little bit shine through uh, <laughs> that's right yeah. yeah how how could we not want to want to do that and and to be a part of that so yeah 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 it's a good thing so yeah thank you so much for being willing to talk to me and uh, about this uh i i know you're gonna see some some hits on your website from this and i'd love to do uh the artist journey as uh part of my fearless artist website book club uh we, I, we're gonna i'd like to go through the book with the students and uh and help motivate and encourage them that way so i'm hoping we can do that uh later on as well so uh, hopefully this summer and we'll encourage them to leave a review on amazon because i know that really helps your book sales as well i hope it's selling well for you i think it's just such a fantastic resource for artists um for all artists i mean we're, we're watercolorists but it yes. applies to so much yes so many creatives i think yes yeah, it, it, thank you so much. Yes, it's been a bestseller. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I get emails every day from people and it, it's oh, yeah. so rewarding to yeah. me, yeah. you know, to hear from people saying that it yes. was so helpful and meaningful to them. And that was what I was hoping for. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yes, and it does yeah. help. The reviews really do help. Yes. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate yeah. your reaching out to me. And yeah, no, thank you so much for, for being willing to be here. Um, I, I, if I'm in, ever in Northern California, I'm going to seek you out. We're going to sit down and have a real coffee and, and a chat too. So come yeah. see me. I love it.
I'd yeah. love to meet in well, person. Well, good. I wish you so many good things. Uh, I know I, I can't wait to see where your artist journey takes you next. Uh, hopefully there'll be more books and more courses and, uh, yes. Uh, Yes, unite on this mission to empower artists and help them be their most authentic selves. Uh, it's the most addictive and fulfilling thing. Uh, and I love that you're doing it. So thank you so yes, much. Thank you so much. Yeah.